Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel and to my knitting podcast series. It is so great to have you here. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Samantha and I am the knitter and knitwear designer behind the Stipkajik. Uh, it's been a little bit since I did a finished objects, works in progress, recent acquisitions type video. Um, I've been doing a lot of, um, I did a big yarn haul and then I had some sweater ideas um, and I kind of showed you some of what you're going to see today in those, but I just kind of wanted to do a dedicated video where I just kind of talk about the state of my knitting, so to speak, um, and just where I am with some projects and just kind of give you guys a bit of closure on things that I brought up before and then didn't exactly circle around to them being finished objects or things that you might have seen um, in my recent videos that I haven't really given you more detail about. Um, so I will be doing that today. So before we get started, I want to talk a little bit about what I'm wearing today, which is showing up really well on camera. So I'm very happy about this. Um, this is the Von Yeo cardigan and I'll pop up so you can get a bit of a better look. Um, I designed this cardigan I think beginning last May, um, after I took a trip to Nice in France, and I picked up some beautiful yarn called Duvet d'Anjou from La Jolie, which is a chain of, um, it's a haberdashery chain in France. You can find shops at different locations in Paris, Bordeaux, Nice, Lyon, and I think there's one in Japan as well. Pretty cool. Um, and this is a blend of Angora and Merino, so it is perfect for the cold arctic circle weather that we have up here in Norway right now. Um, and I kind of played up um, because I bought this yarn from France and it's kind of, it's a homespun, home dyed kind of very French yarn. Um, so I figured I would also use a vintage French floral motif that I found in a vintage knitting book. I don't know how well you can see it here, but it's, it's just, it's lovely. It's a, it really um, kind of catchy to knit. Um, and I, I have built in increases along the raglans. I'm just trying to show you here without knocking my coffee over. Um, so that the lace pattern kind of flows into the raglan, which I thought was a really cool feature. And I wanted to give it romantic bell sleeves, but some of my testers wanted a more fitted sleeve. So I added in optional decrease instructions for a more tapered sleeve as well. So there's just, um, it's been such a process testing this cardigan and getting it out into the world. I learned so much about grading and scaling and um, what do you call it? When you have different increase rates along a yoke for different sizes, because this was my first top-down pattern that I ever designed. And so that, I think, was a little bit harder for me, working from this a similar or the same stitch count in the collar down to, like, a different count versus the other way around. For some reason, I find bottom-up much easier to grade than I do top-down. And I don't know why I have that hang-up, but this helped me so much. Um, I had amazing, amazing test knitters who just were extremely helpful at all points of the process um, and we we definitely tweaked it and we got it kind of to the point where I am so proud to put this out into the world um, and I just released it I think last week by the time this podcast goes out so if you are interested I will pop the link down below and you can knit your own Bonnie cardigan and we can match and that would be so fun um, and also if you want to check out some beautiful colors and yarn combinations that other testers used to knit theirs, you can check out the hashtag Bonnia Cardigan on Instagram. And there's also quite a few lovely Ravelry project pages that I have linked to as well um, in the Ravelry link that I put down for the Bonnia Cardigan below. The first finished object I have for you today, I think you might have seen on um, my knit and chat that I just did with my boyfriend, Kevin. Um, and I've spoken to you about this on previous podcasts as well. This is the waffle sweater from Knitting for Olive, which is just so, so fun to knit, you guys. I, um, I knit this as my plane project when I was traveling from Norway to DC to visit my parents this past summer. 
Um, so I started it then. I had to put it aside for a bit because I had some test knits and designs to work on. Um, and then kind of when I wanted a bit of a break from testing and designing, I picked it back up and it just went by so fast. Um, I have knit this with one strand of Drops Baby Merino and Drops Kid Silk. And I think the shade is either called Bordeaux or Burgundy, but I'll pop the name up in the little box that this corner, this corner. <laughs> I'll pop it up in that box so you can see. Um, and I commented in the podcast where I showed this to you when it was still a whip. And I was like, okay, so the circumference of the final garment is supposed to be 90-ish centimeters around um, for the extra small size, which is the one that I knit. And as I was knitting it, the circumference of the body was 60 centimeters. And that, I mean, my, um, uh, what is it called? My bust circumference is 73 centimeters. So I was like, okay, this has a fair bit of negative ease. It fits, but it's kind of like, you know, it's very form fitting. Um, so I really hope this stretches out when I block. And it did, it's actually, it went from being 30 centimeters across when it was flat to being 45. So it grew quite a bit. If anyone else is knitting the waffle sweater and like notices while they're knitting, oh my God, this is so tiny. I think I've just knit myself a kid sweater. Um, I promise you, you haven't. Typically, um, if you use yarn that meets gauge when you swatch, then you should be a-okay with the final garment. Um, and so I, I love this. A couple modifications that I made, um, I think, so the pattern itself calls for three strands of mohair, but I wanted it to be a little bit more substantive, which is why I used the baby merino and the kid silk. Um, instead of doing three strands of kid silk, which was the initial plan. And also the pattern says to knit the body until it reaches, I think like 52 centimeters or something. And I only knit it to 48 because I like myself a bit of a cropped sweater. Um, and I also have a very short torso. So I just kind of figured I would make it a bit shorter and um, be happy with that. And I love, love, love the length. Um, everything fits so well. I just want to show you the whole thing. So I'm just holding it up on me and showing you this texture. Super, super fun. Um, the sleeves, actually, you can use a 40 centimeter circular needle to knit these. So that is really nice because it goes by so speedy when you, <laughs> I've never used DPNs before. Um, so what I would do is do magic loop, right? And magic loop takes me so long because I have to transition the stitches to the front and back, but um, not, not for this. You can just use a 40 centimeter circular needle. Um, so yeah, that is my finished waffle sweater. And I have already been wearing it so much and I think it's a perfect Christmassy color. So I definitely see myself wearing this more as uh, Christmas gets near. The second finished object that I have for you guys today um, is also a sweater that you've probably seen on Knit and Chat. And also I think I showed you in my choosing colors for knitwear type video that I did because that's when that was still a work in progress. And now it's done. Ah, look at this yoke. I'm so pleased with it. Uh, this is my first ever Fair Isle design. Um, so when I was visiting my parents in the States, I, <laughs> I'd already ordered so much yarn to their house, you guys. Um, I talked about how there was a Pearl Soho sale. And so I ordered a bunch of yarn, um, understory and the Koori that they had discontinued and they had it on a 60% off sale. I ordered so much of that to my parents' house. Um, and on top of that, I also had some lovely Ritual DK yarn from Thought to Thread, who is an indie dyer in Seattle. Um, he had very, very kindly sent me a sweater's quantity of yarn to design a sweater with and that was waiting for uh, me at my parents' house as well. And on top of that, I just had to go into a yarn store nearby and choose my own US yarn and bring it home with me. So I went to a lovely sewing and knitting crafting shop called the Finch Knit and Sew Studio in downtown Leesburg, which is very near to where my parents live. And it's just the, it's just the most quaint little yarn store. It is adorable. Just natural lighting everywhere, beautiful, beautiful yarns. Um, I honestly, I, I just wanted to buy everything. <laughs> um, suitcase allowance was the thing that was holding me back there. Um, 
And what I eventually ended up picking up was some really gorgeous um, Quince & Co. owl yarn. And um, I also picked up a, um, a hank of Blue Sky Fibers Woolstock DK. And that is what went into making this sweater. So this is almost an all over Fair Isle design. It's got Fair Isle on the sleeve cuffs and Fair Isle on the yoke. And honestly, uh, real talk, the reason for this is because I fell in love with this shade of brown. The, I think it's called Owl um, Bard is the official shade name. And it's just the most rich, warm, chocolatey brown. I, I just, I fell in love with it. And I wanted to make a Fair House flyer using this color, but they only had two hanks in stock. Um, and each hank is 112 meters. So I was like, right, I need to be able to use this as the main color. And I also need to be able to use um, enough Fair Isle that I can get a whole sweater out of two hanks of the main color. And then the rest is um, all contrast colors. And I did actually, I only ran out of yarn on this sleeve. No, it's not, it's this sleeve. I ran out of yarn um, at the very, very, very end of this sleeve over here, my second sleeve. And um, I just filled in the blanks with a little bit of um, Let Let Be in a similar chocolatey brown color that I had in stash. And actually I had a bit of an experience knitting this sweater where I also didn't pick up enough of a couple of the contrast colors. Um, but the silver lining to that is that now that I'm writing up the pattern, I have so many yarn substitutes that I can put in, right? Because I, I bought these yarns and I knit most of the sweater with them. And then towards like the ribbing here, um, I used uh, Varda from uh, Hilsevag. Um, I think they're called Ulfabriken. It's a yarn company in Norway, um, which meets gauge perfectly. It's the same kind of texture. It has the same kind of, um, kind of little bit of a variegated rustic feel to it. Um, I've used Letlepi as a substitute for both the um, cranberry red and for the bard in just this one little sleeve where I needed like two extra meters of both. Um, and I used a little bit of Drops in the Paul as a substitute for the um, Blue Sky Fibers Woolstock DK, which is right over here. So now I have a fair bit of yarn that I can recommend that testers use if they can't get um, Quinton Coat Owl or Blue Sky Woolstock DK. Um, and I am currently writing the pattern for this actually right now, and I will be putting out a testing call very, very soon. There might even be a testing call in this video, um, so I will pop the link down below if so, um, and if you're interested in testing this really fun Fair Isle sweater um, that I have actually named now, um, it's the Maryland Heights sweater named after my favorite hike near where my parents live. Um, yeah, just pop in a response to the forum down below if there is a forum. There probably will be a forum. <laughs> but yeah, I um, I loved, loved, loved the process of designing Fair Isle. Um, it was just so fun. I, I bought the yarn and I <laughs> I sat up until, I mean, I was jet lagged, right? So I should have been going to bed around like 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time because that's midnight for me in Norway. Um, but instead I stayed up until 2 a.m. just charting out what I wanted for this sweater uh, because I, I just... Oh gosh, I, I was just so excited to get designing. Um, and then when I started knitting on the Fair Isle, it went so fast. It is crazy. I think it's the same thing that people see with stripes and stuff. Like when you're when you're working with different colors in the same knitting project, it just goes by so fast because you're so excited to see what it looks like on the next row. So this just flew off the needles and I am so excited to get it out there into the world. It is just, oh, I just love this. <laughs> The next finished object that I have for you is a second pair of glacier mittens. So if you remember from my first leftover yarn um, when a stash tour podcast episode that I did, I showed you that I had some weird bits of drops air left over um, and I used some of those colors and I made myself a pair of marled mittens. I think it, it was a light shade of gray and some white and brown and kind of a teal turquoise blue. And my boyfriend liked them so much that he wanted a pair. 
So he picked out these colors from my stash. Um, I think there's a, there's white, there's gray, and there is like a ruby red in here. And I decided to make him, because I wrote this pattern myself, uh, so I made the larger size for him and tested them out. And so he has a pair of glacier mittens now. And they're just, I, I love this marling technique type look, right? Like, I, I just think it looks... Uh, I mean, it, it, it's like, it's perfectly unkempt. I don't know how to describe it. it it's, it, it looks like it's messy, but in a cool way. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I am currently working on the pattern for these because I've knit two samples now. Um, and I think they are, I mean, he, his complaint about them, guys, is that they are too warm. We live in the Arctic Circle, so <laughs> I think, I think I have, um, I have perfected the the perfect pair of very warm mittens. Um, so if you want to stay outside for a fair bit on end, assuming it's not windy because this wool is not very windproof, then these mittens have got you. <laughs> um, that is, they're definitely warm. They're, it's two strands of drops air together. And I, I mean, they're going to look very large on me, but I'll just kind of pop them on and show you. Yeah. Not great for grabbing phones either, because they're so soft and fuzzy that your phone will just slip right through. I speak from experience. Um, but great for roasting marshmallows or hot dogs or um, just waiting for the northern lights. We've used them for that before. Um, I'm getting warm now, so I'm going to take them off. Uh, but yeah, expect to see a free pattern for these soon if you're interested. Such a great stash buster and also a great Christmas present. Um, because my mom actually wants a fingerless pair of these now. So I'm like, oh great, I, I have so much random stash here and I need to get rid of anyway. So that, that's perfect. Two birds, one stone. Um, yeah. Oh, I'm so happy he likes them too. <laughs> my last finished object is actually something I almost forgot to show you guys in this video. If you saw my Drops yarn haul video, you know that I picked up a little bit of wheat Drops Wish because I had some navy blue drops wish left over from when I knit my Salerno cardigan test knit from the Knit Pro Girl. And I figured I could hold them together and make a hat. And I did. So I used exactly one skein of drops wish in the colorway wheat. So I still have a whole skein left over. So, so the mission to uh, clear my stash was not exactly successful, but I did make myself a really nice, really warm beanie. It's actually, um, it has snowed here now. You guys, there is snow and ice all over the island. It is very, very cold. It has been, I think it was negative five one day last week Celsius. Um, but and this beanie has kept me so warm. I, I just put it on. I don't even have to put a hood on over it or anything. Um, it just, uh, yeah. It does a really, really good job at keeping you warm. And I think that's because, so this is corrugated ribbing. So it's a little bit thicker than normal ribbing. At least it feels that way to me because there's it's double stranded yarn in the back. So it's kind of like, I'll show you here, looks kind of like this on the inside, right? Um, and that also means that it's just a little bit tighter around your ears, which I really like because I, my ears get so cold for some reason. I, I've never been a hat person because I need like the big utility grade earmuffs, um, but not with this actually. This works very, very well at keeping me warm. Um, and the rest of the hat is just straight, striking at a single color and there's a fair amount of decreases at the crown, which I think are kind of neat because they pull the hat in kind of, it, it looks very symmetrical. Um, and this is a pattern that I made as well. So I will be putting out a um, free pattern for this. I'm not entirely sure what to call it yet. I think it looks very kind of, uh, what I'm getting from it is very kind of 80s retro ski vibes. I feel like this would belong at a ski resort in the 80s. Um, just, you know, uh, cruising the slopes or afterwards um, at an opera ski or something. I, so that's, I think, where I am going to head um, when I name that. So keep an eye out for this as well. I think I'm going to release the Glacier Mittens first. And I still have Kevin's, um, the black hat that I knit him, the Arctic Red Beanie. The pattern for that is ready as well. And then there will be this. 
So lots of free accessory patterns, and I'm hoping they can come out before Christmas because, I mean, as someone who is also knitting Christmas presents, which I will talk about later in my works in progress, I, um, I think small accessories are definitely the way to go when you, um, when you want to do a lot of them for family and friends. Moving on to works in progress, and I have quite a few of them, guys, because I, um, I can't stop myself from casting on new things. So, um, so bear with me here. The first thing I'm going to show you is what you, I think you've seen this before. It is my longest running work in progress at this point. This is the Innis skirt from Knits from Oslo, which is a, just a really, really pretty cable knit wrap skirt. Um, with these increases in the seed stitch panels that kind of because it's supposed to sit right like Right below your waistline and then increase around your hips so that you have a little bit of extra room and at the end um, these two Corners which won't even fit in the frame together these two corners um, Kind of overlap so that they wrap together and then you pick up stitches from there and make a um, a ribbed kind of what do you call that? A waistband and insert an elastic into it. So this kind of main body of the skirt is supposed to be 50 centimeters long. And right now I'm at about 20. But I think, because I've been knitting on my second sleeve of the Kamari sweater, which is my all over cable sweater using my Thought to Thread Ritual DK yarn. And that is very, very cable intensive. Um, and so I haven't really felt like working on more cables. And now that I've finally finished that, um, I, I just kind of feel like tossing the cable needle away for a while. Um, so I won't be coming back to this for a little bit, but I do really, really love, um, it's a combination of the yarn and the pattern that just makes me adore knitting on this skirt. I'm using Drops Soft Tweed. Um, I think it's in the shade Marzipan, but I will put that in the little box in case I'm wrong. And then I'm also using Viking Garn Kid Silk in, I think it's like a beige tan shade that I will also put in the little box. Um, and the reason why I'm using Drops Off Tweed is because as I've mentioned in other videos in the past, it doesn't pill, or at least I've noticed that it doesn't pill as much for me. So my sole dog sweater is knit kind of with the same combination. It's knit with one thread of soft tweed and then one thread of Kid Silk mohair. Um, and I have noticed absolutely no pilling on that sweater, which is amazing um, because I, especially those places, right, where like your arm rubs together with the body, like over here-ish, you would think there'd be some pilling over there. No, nothing. So <laughs> since I'm knitting a skirt, I'm like, I really don't want pilling on my, uh, uh, on the back. So I would like to use a yarn that I know does not pill. And, and this is just, it's so dreamy to knit up together. It feels so soft and nice. I don't know if it's, um, I have noticed for some yarns, um, different dye lots make the yarn softer. Or not dye lots, different colorways, maybe it's dye lots too, but different colorways of yarn are softer than other colorways. And this colorway of Drops Soft Tweed is very, very soft um, and very, very nice to knit with. And I hope that doesn't have any effect on the pilling, but we will see. I, I do really, I like this panel this kind of crissy crossy cable grid kind of that is that's the part that I like knitting on the most I think I like kind of seeing that take shape so I think when I feel like knitting cables again I will definitely pick this up and keep going with it I think one of the things that's also stopping me from kind of knitting on it so much right now is so if you guys have been following me for a while you know that I I was knitting or not knitting I was crocheting a granny square tote bag earlier this year and then I stopped as soon as summer was over because I was like, well, the whole, the image I had in my head of that tote bag, right, was carrying it to the beach with me. And now that I couldn't because summer was over, I just kind of stopped um, for a while. I will pick it back up probably next spring so that I can have it for next summer. But the same thing with this skirt, because like now it's snowing and it's in the negatives in um, Tromsa. So I can't wear this skirt until it gets a bit warm again warm again. Yes. Uh, so I don't think I will knit on it so much until it is kind of maybe January, February, and then I'll kind of have a fire under my butt to get it going and finish it off and 
have it ready to wear for when the weather gets a little bit warmer and the ice and the snow starts melting a bit and I can look all cute again. Um, so yeah, I, I, have, I have a bit of time to get this done, which is good because it's one of my kind of forever projects. So yes, expect to see more of this in the future. Speaking of forever projects, one of my newest castles is extracted from my pile of whips. I told you guys in the um, 10 sweaters that I want to knit this fall slash winter video that I did that I really wanted to knit the Lillehammer 94 sweater. Um, and this is the start of the Lillehammer 94 sweater, um, which is curling because that is what color work does when it's still this short. I googled that because I was afraid that I was doing something wrong with my tension and everyone was like, no, it just curls. So this is whoop, the kind of color work at the bottom. And I've finished the ribbing and I finished the, um, they have, they call it board N234, I think. And then they have like a bunmonster, which is a, um, uh, what does that even, what does that mean? It's like a base pattern. It, it's, it's most of the body. That's what it's, it's patterned in. So I've just hit the bunmonster part of this. And I will be knitting that in just black and white. So what I really wanted to do was kind of get through the part that's like all colorful at the bottom so that I could cut off the colors and then just deal with two different colors at the same time. So white and black. Um, but I have, I've actually really, really enjoyed um, knitting this so far. I think it's, it's something about color work, right? Like I, I mentioned on the Maryland Heights sweater, it's just something about the, um, the novelty of each row that just kind of helps you knit a lot faster, um, or at least helps me knit a lot faster. Um, and I also think, so my, my main issue with this sweater, and because I am knitting the one that is in Norwegian, I, I know that there is an English version of the pattern, but as far as I'm aware, the English pattern is only available in book form. And it's also different than the Norwegian pattern. It has increases at the body after you do the ribbing. And I don't quite want those. I want to just continue with the same stitch count that I had because even the smallest size is a bit too big, I think, for me. So if it's a bit smaller, I won't quite mind so much. Um, and basically the Norwegian pattern um, has instructions for steaking. And I've never steaked in my life and I am so scared of it. I don't own a sewing machine. Um, if I knit this whole thing, because I, I'll put a picture of it in the side so you guys can see just how detailed the sweater is, but if I get that far and I have to steak and I ruin it, I will cry and I don't think I'll come back to it. So what I did, um, now that I'm knitting up the pattern, is I kind of, I calculated how wide the sleeves are going to be and then I calculated what the stitch count for that is on the body and so I like worked my way backwards from this is the last row to where would I need to split off for the sleeves. So I just kind of marked on the pattern, this is the row where I need to divide for the front and back and start knitting flat. Um, and because my tension is very different when I knit front and back than when I knit in the round, it's usually a little bit tighter. Then I think I'm going to switch to a, um, I'm using a four millimeter needle right now. I think I'll probably switch to a 4.5 when I'm knitting back and forth. And then hopefully it, um, because also, right, when I pick up sleeves from there, I don't want it being too far in because then your drop sleeve looks all bunchy over here. So, so if it's a little bit bigger at the shoulder area, I won't quite mind, but I do want it a bit narrower for the, um, for the waist and the almost bust area, the rib cagey area for me. So that is the plan for this sweater. But again, it's just one of those forever projects that just will keep plodding along. I would really, really like it ready for um, when cross-country skiing starts here. I mean, not starts, because that I think is very um, optimistic. Because if the snow keeps, I think it's supposed to rain next week, and it might wash away all the snow. But assuming that it comes back after that, cross-country season won't actually start for another two weeks. And I don't think this sweater will be done until January at the very earliest, just because it is very intense color work. So if I can have it ready for some point of cross-country skiing season, which honestly, it doesn't end until April usually on a good year. So yeah, I have, I have a bit of time to get this done, but I am really, really enjoying it. I think it's a ton of fun. 
I, I love the really intricate color work in it. Um, and I also like that it is intricate color work, but it's only two colors for most of it. So it, it's not, I mean, there's not a lot of tension issues that I notice when I'm doing three or four colors on one round kind of color work that pop up in this sweater. Yes. <laughs> progress so far. <laughs> And I don't know, I don't know if I'll have any more progress on this in the next whip video that I make for you guys, but yeah, I'll, I'll try to get some done. The next work in progress that I have on my needles is actually very close to being finished soon. Oof. Oh no. <laughs> I've showed you guys this sweater before um, when I talked about choosing colors for knitwear, when I was talking about variegated mohair and how to kind of use it with um, a solid base, which is what I'm doing here. So this sweater is made with Drops Nepal and a strand of Unique Tkarn Tin Silk Mohair in the color East Dance, which is, if I can pop up, I've already wound it into a little ball, but it's a variegated, really, really pretty, it's like, it, it's got blues, it's kind of, its base color is a natural, even though that's not popping up great right now and it's got a little bit of purple in it and it's just a very kind of it, it's very kind of mermaidy um and i think that kind of oh sorry about my needles that kind of shows through in the texture that i've chosen here as well so oh gosh if i can get this anywhere close to where you guys can see it on the camera and now i've also got mohair in my mouth so that's fun um here yeah so it's kind of like, it's, it's this texture where you create, oof, you slip a lot of stitches with the yarn in front and then you kind of pick them up to create these little divots, um, which is so fun to knit and it's quite unique. I haven't seen it in any other kinds of knit designs and it goes so fast. So this sleeve was done in a day, basically, right? And I haven't done the ribbing yet, but most of the sleeve was done in a day, which is crazy. Um, and I am currently, I have stitches on hold for the second sleeve, so I'll be starting that soon. And the goal is, um, there is this really, really gorgeous lake that's about an hour and a half to two hours away from where we live. It's called Blois Vanne. It's by the Lingen Alps. I'll put a picture of it up because I've been there actually before. Um, and it's, it's just absolutely gorgeous. It is a very, very strong color blue because of the silt and sediment that flows down from the glacier above it into the water. And my my dream <laughs> that I have for this sweater is to wear it and skate on the lake. And I used to take figure skating lessons. So I'm like, oh, that could be so magical. <laughs> and that's, that's my plan for this. Um, because it, that's just what the colors remind me of kind of is, is that specific area in that lake like the the purples and like the dark mountains and stuff and then like the natural white of the glacier snow and then you have the blue of the lake and that's just that's that is that location for me so that is what i have in mind for this and i am really hoping to get it done before like as i've mentioned right it's really cold but it's going to rain next week so it probably the lake won't be frozen but pretty soon after that there's like a very very small window where you can get in and skate on it before the snow covers it all up so that's what I'm hoping to do is um, take advantage of that time and get there and wear this and skate. So keep your eyes peeled. That is coming. I will definitely post a video of that on my um, either in one of my videos or as a video if that happens. Second to last work in progress. I have a lot of them, guys. Um, the cast on itis is real. This is. Recognize this from somewhere. Wait, no. <laughs> It's this. <laughs> um, I'm making a white version of my Banya cardigan because I want to wear it. It Okay, so <laughs> back to the explanation basic stuff, right? In Scandinavia, um, at least in Norway and Sweden, I think Denmark as well, you, we have these work Christmas parties towards the end of the year and they're called Juleboard. And basically it's just this big... Christmas potluck dinner. Um, well, not really, because you don't bring the food. It's a big Christmas buffet dinner um, where you there's tons of meat, tons of cheese, cold cuts, um, just fish, lots and lots of food, hearty food. 
And in addition to that, there is a lot of stuff to drink. Um, wine, glug, um, I mean, just all kinds. And it, it's a big party. Everyone goes wild. Um, it's Everyone dresses up really nicely. So what I'm planning to do, because I have this really, really nice red velvet, well, it's more of a burgundy velvet dress, and I wanted to make a white Bonnier cardigan that I can wear over my dress because it's still kind of cold, um, but I want to look really nice and classy. So I figure I'll have my nice velvet maxi dress and I will also have my really nice elegant white Bonnier cardigan to wear over it. So um, the thing, so this Bonnier cardigan, as I've kind of shown you, it's a bit it's a bit too cropped for pants, I think. And that, that is something I fixed in the pattern. I made it a little bit longer. And I also um, added instructions for extra repeats if you wanted to make it longer. Um, but it's the perfect length to wear with a dress. So I think I'm just gonna make one in the same length as I've made my sample and wear it with my nice uniboard dress. And I am undecided actually on whether I'm going to taper the sleeves or keep the nice bell sleeves that I did for this version. Because I really do like these sleeves. Um, but also, uniboard, lots of food, um, people are a little bit drunk, so I don't kind of want my white sleeves going into stuff, or, you know, into the alcohol, or into the gravy, or whatever. So maybe I'll taper them. I think that'll be um, a decision that I make when I get to the sleeves. I can't say before that. But I'm very, very excited to, to finish this up. I'm knitting it in Drop Sky, which is a super, super soft yarn. So I will feel perfectly fine having it right against my skin. This is a very soft yarn too, but Drop Sky is like a whole other level of soft. Um, so I, I think it'll be really, really nice and warm and comfortable and the perfect uh, functional but elegant addition to my board outfit. All right, my last work in progress, and I actually might discuss two things at once. Uh, okay, so this doesn't look like much, right? Um, and that's because it's going to be a stuffed animal. So I'm going to grab you a book and I'm going to show you what I mean. Ooh. So I bought this book earlier in 2021. It's called Robin Octopus and Friends by Claire Gelder. And it has patterns for these really, really adorable plush animals. Very large ones too. They're about 60 to 70 centimeters when they're standing. So very, very nice, very soft, very lovable stuffies. Um, and I'm planning on making some for my niece and nephew who live in Copenhagen. So my niece, is going to get Charlie the Unicorn, which is what I, see that's, that's the problem with stuffies, right? Is you can't really, it's not as, as kind of obvious of a work in progress as like a knit sweater or a knit scarf or a hat or something is, which is why I can't just show you the gunk of mess and go, this is what I'm doing. I have to show you the actual picture. So she is getting Charlie the Unicorn, um, which I am halfway done with actually. I'm making the individual pieces. Uh, because unicorns are her favorite animal. She loves unicorns. Um, and my nephew, who is the younger one, he's getting Douglas the Highland Cow. Guys, how cute is this? Oh my gosh. I, I can't get over how cute the Highland Cow is. But he, he's getting Douglas. And the reasoning for why he's getting Douglas is because he has the cutest curly hair. Um, and so it's the same hair as a Highland cow, right? Like Douglas has, has these little curls on his head and so does my nephew. So, <laughs> so yeah, they're, they're getting little stuffies, um, little stuffies. They're getting fairly large stuffies. Sorry, cousins. Um, but yeah, they're gonna, I, I hope to put them in the post by middle of November. That way they get there by Christmas because if you guys, um, if anyone's from Scandinavia, you know, you know about post Nord. Um, you know about the issues that they have with like delivering anything in a timely manner at all to any destination, um, even when it's within Scandinavia, right? Because I have to ship them from Norway to Denmark. So I um, have to get them in a little bit early. So I'm kind of working on that a lot at the moment. 
And the yarn that I'm using is Hobby Amigo. It's my first time working with acrylic yarn, really, since I like actually started knitting. Um, and the pattern, like Claire Gelder, I think, she has her own brand of um, cheeky, chunky wool yarn, which is also meant for use on seven millimeter needles like this. But um, I just want to make it easy for my cousin to clean the stuffed toys, which they will inevitably have to. So I figure acrylic yarn is probably easier than wool yarn, which can felt and get ruined and you can't just dunk it in the wash the way you can with this. So yeah, I'm going to give them acrylic stuffies. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited to see their faces too when they, when they get these. This is, this was the most fun thing to knit, right? And it's kind of falling apart, but it's unicorn hair. So it's like, this is what will be sewn onto the unicorn's mane. And then I have to make like more of these. Oh, it's just so fun. It's like a little fun break from knitting garments and grading and and all that stuff and just being like oh i'm knitting something cute for my little nibblings so yeah that's that's something i'm really excited to finish up and nail down and i'm even thinking about like okay so this is like the problem with being a creative right is you get all these ideas and then you absolutely have to act on them so what i want to do in addition to sending them stuffed animals um as if that wasn't like a whole thing and a half by itself is I also want to make up stories in the cards that I write for them, right? So it's like, Charlie the Unicorn was raised among reindeer in Tromsa and was looking for a best friend. Um, and so it's like, I just want to write these little like postcard letters from um, each of the animals to my niece and nephew and kind of the adventure of how they make their way down to them. So, oh gosh, <laughs> I don't know. It just, it, it's just kind of, I enjoy being creative in a way that I know will make someone happy and I, I really, I, I can't wait to see their reactions when they get their letters and get their stuffies and I hope they like them. The last thing I have for you guys is a recent acquisition. Um, so as I was doing this video or planning out this video and I was thinking these are my finished objects that I haven't showed people and these are my works in progress and what are my acquisitions? I only have one, which I am so, so proud of you guys because I have tried to not buy so much yarn, she says, after her big drops yarn haul. But since then, I've been very good about not buying new yarn, except for some more yarn that I got in the drops yarn haul, but like towards the end of the sale, because I was on the fence and then I was like, oh, you know, it's 40% off. I'm gonna buy a sweater's quantity. Look at this beautiful collar. <laughs> this is my favorite yarn drops air in one of their beautiful new shades. I forget exactly what the name is, but the shade color is 37. And look at this blue, you guys. It's so bright and beautiful. I love it so much. Um, I, I, I don't even know what I'm gonna do with this. I'm just gonna keep it in my stash and look at it and just be inspired by how beautiful it is. Um, I just, I don't know, I, I bought Kuri. Um, the yarn from Pearl Soho that they discontinued in this color as well. And I am so, so excited to cast on and get going with that. And then I saw that they had Drops Air in this color now, and I was like, all right, sign me up, I'm sold. Um, so, yeah, I got six skeins of this, and I will be knitting a sweater with it in the future, but I have no idea what that sweater is going to look like. I'm hoping inspiration will hit at some point. Um, but until then, it will just live in my stash, safe and sound, very nicely. <laughs> and like I was telling you, I think it was one of my most recent podcasts, right? Where I was like, oh, I'm drawn to neutrals now. I So when I showed you my Maryland Heights sweater for the first time, where I was talking about the colors that I chose and how I was being like drawn into the nuances in the different browns and the different grays and the different tans and and how they all blended together and made a really nice palette. I thought I was really shifting more towards neutrals. I thought that's what I was coming into, but I think it's just like, I alternate a lot. I can alternate multiple times in the same day. So I, I will love this and I'll knit on it and then I'll go, I want more color and I will go to something like this. So yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. I like them both, but I just was really, really craving this color. So yes something colorful coming in this yarn very, very soon. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed um, seeing some of my finished objects since last time and like all 10 works in progress or whatever that I showed you and my one very small, very tame acquisition because I have been good, I think, relatively speaking. Um, but yeah, I it's been so nice to share this with you. And if you like listening to my yarny nitty thoughts, then please go ahead and like and subscribe and leave me a comment on what you're working on. I would love to, are you knitting Christmas presents? Have you ever knit a stuffy? Um, what are your kind of go-to ideas? I would love to know um, because I have a lot of family now who knows that I knit and they really want presents. And I, I mean, I would love to knit them all something, but it's, I only have two hands, you guys. Um, but yeah, I, um, I have really, really enjoyed talking with you today. And if you want to come over and say hello, I'm over on Instagram and Ravelry and TikTok as The Stricka Chick. And you can also find me on my own website, thestrickachick.com. Until next time, you guys, happy knitting. Bye.